Welcome back to Lonely Man BGs and this video on Glass Road, a game for up to four players with a cool little solo version where you try to beat your previous score. Typical playtime is roughly 20 minutes per player with the solo game lasting much longer when you have nothing to do but think about each and every consequence to each and every action you could theoretically take. In Glass Road, players will attempt to produce glass and bricks and construct buildings over a series of four building periods which will earn them points at the end of the game. Each player begins the game with a landscape board, as well as a production board, and one of the four sets of specialist cards. The landscape board is made up of 20 individual landscape spaces, which will be covered throughout the game with a variety of tiles. At the beginning of the game, a player's landscape board will be filled with six forests, which take up two spaces each, as well as two pits, two groves, and two ponds. Along the side of the landscape board, the player has three buildings which have already been constructed and which will give players points at the end of the game if they have any of the shown resource. The forest glassworks gives one point per glass at the end of the game. The glassmaker's colony gives half a point per quartz sand. And the Brotherhood of the Masons awards one point per brick. So what's the whole point of the landscape board? Well, in general, players will attempt to stuff it with useful buildings and landscape tiles which will work together to give the player more resources throughout the game, or give the player more ways to score points at the end. Now where do buildings come from? The building board, of course. This is set up at the beginning of the game, with a number of buildings placed depending on player count. There are three building types, processing buildings, immediate buildings, and bonus buildings. Processing buildings are able to be used at any time and as much as a player wishes, and they are typically conversion tools. The sand pit allows a player to pay one water to gain two quartz sand, while the colonization house lets the player remove one forest landscape tile to gain a single charcoal resource. Immediate buildings give the player a one-time effect. The clay lake, for example, grants the player seven clay, while the grove court allows the player to place a grove on each empty space adjacent to the building. Finally, bonus buildings, which give players more ways to score at the end. If a player has the floodgate building at the end of the game, they earn a point for each connected pond tile in a single system. Some of these buildings, like coal storage or food locker, give points when players have leftover resources at the end of the game. Note that each building has a build cost on the left hand side. Most involve wood, brick, clay, and even glass. Now I've been mentioning these mythical resources this entire time, and you don't even know how they work. At the beginning of the game, each player receives a production board. Each production board contains two wheels, one for glass and one for brick. Each production wheel has a number of corresponding resources that goes into each ultimate resource. Players place their starting resources at the beginning of the game. For example, on the glassworks wheel, the player starts with zero quartz sand, one food, two charcoal, three water, and four wood. Note that both brick and glass begin at zero, and throughout the game, players must work to produce them. So here's how the wheels work. Whenever a resource is gained, its token moves that number of spaces, simple enough. But players must be cautious. If this brown sector zero is ever emptied of resource tokens, the production wheel immediately rotates clockwise, creating that wheel's resource and depleting each of the resources going into it by one. Also important to know is that the player can only have three bricks and three glass at any time, and the production wheel won't rotate anymore until the value is depleted. So that's resources and buildings and landscapes. Now how does this all tie together? Well, during each of the four rounds, a player will pick up their specialist deck and choose five specialist cards. These cards will have a variety of functions, and players will be able to play either one or both of the abilities on the card. Let's use this pawn builder as our first introduction. The top ability of the pawn builder allows the player to place a pawn tile on an empty space of the player's landscape board. This could be useful for buildings that require certain configurations, like the fish yard. Additionally, it could be useful in the pawn builder's second ability, as that allows the player to gain either quartz sand or water corresponding to the number of pawns in the player's landscape board. Here is another specialist, the slash and burn farmer. When played, he requires the player to remove a forest tile from their board in exchange for one or both of the abilities, which would be two additional coal or two additional food. Another example is the cultivator, who allows the player to place a pond, pit, or grove on their board on any free space. His second ability allows the player to purchase a building. Before doing so, the player must of course pay the cost and be able to place it on an empty space. 
let's take a look at one final specialist, the Feudal Lord. His topmost ability is the one that concerns us now, which allows the player to draw a building from each of the building stacks, which are then placed face up in front of the player. When a player uses the build ability, they can choose from their private building stash if they wish. Players will take turns playing a number of cards from their hand during each of the following rounds. Depending on what cards they play, when they play them, and who else has the same card in their hand, the players will be able to play either one or both of the abilities from their chosen specialist. At the end of the game, players score their landscape boards, taking into account the buildings and their abilities, and their end resources. This concludes our overview of Glass Road. Thanks for watching.